Hi, this is Beth from Around the Table Yarns. Today is the April um, screening or taping of our sweater club. We're doing the quintessential cardigan from Church Mouse Yarns and Tees. And today we're going to be demonstrating showing the seaming the shoulders and picking up around the neck. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the issues that come up when you start to put things together with a sweater. So I'm going to switch over to the document camera. And I'm going to do a little, a little diagramming. So our sweater, as you all know, is in pieces. And when you do a sweater in pieces, you... Um, you want to check some things out. So first of all, if this is the back of my sweater, doo -doo -doo, and it comes down and it's straight, and it comes down, whoop, and it's straight to say here. You want to make sure that the pieces are all the correct size and that they're lining up to each other the way that they should. So um, I can tell a sad story, which is that I was putting my, I did my back and I did my left front, which is the side that the buttons are sewn onto. And I went to check my right, I went to um, do the, the right front, which is the side that has the buttonholes. And we talked about setting the buttonholes and how far apart the buttonholes would be. And I decided to completely ignore my own information and just, you know, randomly knit the buttonholes wherever I felt like it. And so I got to about here. So this would be the front of the sweater. I got to about here. So, and it comes down like that. It's, it's got a little bit more, more of a neckline. I got about here on the front and realized that I was a fool and I needed to start over and correctly count my rows. So I ripped it out and I started over and I got all the way, and these are actually sloped shoulders. So here, I'll just put those sloped shoulders in. I got all the way to the beginning of the sloping of the shoulders, the beginning of the short rows on the shoulders. So I was all the way to here and I held it up and my piece was like substantially smaller than the other pieces. It was like, it was, it was like a toy size compared to the other piece. And I realized that I had been knitting it on the wrong needle, that I had completely the wrong gauge. I had just blithely picked up the needle that was in the bag with the rest of the yarn because I put it down for a little bit and started with that. And, um, and there was literally nothing I could do except rip it out again and start completely over changing to the correct size needle. And I, I tell you this is the cautionary tale. Please note the needle sizes you are using for the ribbing and the body of your sweater in case you, there is any gap of time and you will not remember, you will not remember what size needle it is unless you write it down. Please write down what size needle you're using. I beg you <laughs> because don't be like me. Okay, so if this is the way the sweater is going to be joined, when we actually do the joining though, we're going to be joining it at the shoulders first. I'm just gonna draw a very poor, poor diagram like that to the back. So we're going to put our right front together with our right back, and that will be on the left-hand side. Get a little bit less of a glare on there. And you're gonna put the shoulders together in that direction, and then it's gonna be the same thing. The left front will be on the right side as you're facing it. 
to this is the left front. So I'm erasing all these lines. This is now just the back of my sweater. So if you lay out with right sides facing up your sweater, first, these pieces should be essentially the same size, but mirror images. And the two pieces should be essentially the same length from armhole to hem. So you want to lay them on top of each other and just make sure that everything is fitting, that you have not made any errors in your pieces because you didn't do these all at once. You did them sequentially on at different moments in time. And so you just want to double check that you have the correct sizing of everything before you go ahead and start seaming. Seaming is not the point in time you want to find out that your pieces are different sizes. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so this is the layout that you're going to start with. So the thing that I was talking to the class this morning about is that if you're going to make any kind of, so eventually we're going to have sleeves that fit in here. So I'm just going to draw one sleeve because I'm just kind of eyeballing this and not doing my best work. So you want to sew these sleeve, these seams first. You could, you could one or the other of the shoulder seams are the first seams that you do. And that's so that you can pick up and do around the neck. And then after that, the second seam is going to be setting in the sleeve. And when I do that, I use a long piece of thread a th a, or yarn long enough to do from here to here, but I start it dead center in the sleeve and I use half of it to go this direction and half of it to go this direction. So when we do the setting in of the sleeves, that's what we're going to be doing. But for today, we're just going to work on setting in the shoulder seams and then picking up around the neck. Um, the reason that I do this though, the reason that I go from the center down to the armhole is that you can make your stitches pretty even looking, but there could still be discrepancy between how many, how much of the front or the back you have and how much of the top of the sleeve you have. And if you have to squish anything together or fudge anything, it is better to fudge in the armpit than at the top of the shoulder where people's eyes will be able to see very easily. So the same kind of rule goes for doing the, the shoulder. I always think that if you're going to make something fudge a little bit, you want to fudge in the least obvious place. So if the armpit is the least obvious place on the sleeve, I would suggest that the shoulder side is the least obvious place in the in the bot in this shoulder seam because if you fudge at the neckline that's going to be much more what people are looking at than the top of the shoulder now those to be fair those are both sort of in view all the time and much less um inconspicuous than the underarm but it's it's my thinking is that you want to you want to go away from the places where people are looking, people tend to look at your face. So they're more likely to see something at your neck edge than at your shoulder edge. That's my two cents. When we do this kind of seaming, I'm going to be using the mattress stitch. And when I look at the top of my piece of work, I, I view the top of my piece of work as like a series of ice cream cones. So this is where the, the cast off edge is, and I'm gonna hold it parallel to the other side. So this would be like the back, and this would be the front. And what I want to show you is just this idea of lining up the stitches as best you can. So if this is a stitch, this is the V of the stitch underneath, and this is the bind off on top. 
And I would like you to consider working, and there's another stitch underneath that. And sometimes, you know, there's not because you've you've done a stepped sloped bind off on this shoulder. So sometimes it's there seems to be a little bit of a step and we'll see that when we do the seam. But what I want you to consider doing is working as close to the bind off edge as you can. So I want you to find the V that's immediately below the bind off. And that is where you want to consider doing the seaming. And then to make it come out so that you're creating, it's almost like you're creating a row of knitted stitches, but we're going to be doing this with our darning needle. So with your darning needle, you're going to come in from the side, from the outside, um, and this would be the neck edge. I work from right to left, so I'd have to turn this around so that I, or I would be working from this side and over. But you're going to go to the neck edge and on the, the one that's closest to you, whether that's the back or the front, you want to go under one leg and come out the center of that stitch. So I want to come out the center of this stitch with my needle and I want to go outside to the outside of these two legs and I want to go under those two legs and then come back to this one. So I'm essentially creating a stitch that grabs around the other side and comes back to the center of this one. And then I turn to the right and I go, I continue going from right to left and I put my darning needle under this leg and this leg. So it goes under one leg here, but from that point onwards, it's always gonna go under two legs. It goes under two legs here and then back in where it came out of and then under two legs to come out the center of the next stitch in the in the, the shoulder seam. And then you go back out and around the other stitch and then back to where you came in from. So you're gonna create this series of stitches that essentially mimic the row at the top of your seam. Let's see what that looks like in real life. One of my class members was very kind because my sample is in black. And so Carolyn, this is what the seam will look like when we're done with it. And underneath it looks like this. And that's because I've stayed very close to the top. So it's not real bulky. It's really just the length or the, the depth of one's one full stitch. If it's done correctly, you should be able to pull out the stitching. So now we're going to put it back. As soon as I find my darning needle, what this break here a second ago. <laughs> I put it down like an idiot. Now I can't find it. Let me just grab another one. I moved the one I keep on my desk and that was silly. All right. The yarn that you use doesn't need to be super long. It needs to be at least as long as the seam that you're going to sew and then about another foot. 
So we're gonna be using a darning needle and we're holding these two edges close together. There was some question today, were these seams the same length? Um, so that's, and they are, they're pretty much exactly the same length. And you can see that there's sort of a little bit of a step. So that's what I was talking about, but wasn't able to draw. So there's, you know, the, the four stitches and then four stitches and then four stitches and four stitches and four stitches. And they look just a little bit stepped and that's from doing the bias bind off. So we're gonna try and make that as unnoticeable as possible in our seam. So I'm gonna come from the outside of the back under one strand, come through, leave my tail. And now on the top of the neck, I want to come under both legs on that side. Your tails will be sort of in the way, just can hold them off to the right. So here's my yarn coming through, coming around, and I wanna go back in where I came out of and staying close to the top of, these, of this row, I want to come out in the center, so two legs over, the left leg of the stitch that I was in and the right leg of the stitch next to it. I'm not pulling tight. And then I go in where I came out of on top and under two legs. In where I came out of. And this is where the first of those steps are. So I'm going to go down to the lower stitch because if I go up here, it's going to leave a big hole. So I'm going to go down to this lower stitch and then around back where I came out of and under two. In where I came out of and then stay close to the top of the stitches back where I came from on the other side, in and over two. So I'm looking at this as, this as the outside of the stitch that I wanna go around, and this is the other side of that stitch. In to the other side of that stitch. So two legs, one, two. In and under two. Under two. And you're gonna continue that across. Now I haven't pulled tight on this yarn yet, but I'm going to now. So you can sort of see that they're lining up really nicely and you could just leave it loose like this, but it will be, um, I don't think it's that stable if you leave it loose. Something could snag that yarn and pull it out. And so I tend to go ahead and pull on my working yarn, on my the yarn that I'm threading, and then it kind of brings it together like that. The working yarn goes through the, the tunnel of those stitches and it makes a very firm, very stable. It's also kind of hollow. So like I can pull on my yarn that I'm sewing with and it should, slide easily back and forth in that channel that we've formed with the stitches. Now, this is a nice worsted yarn that has plies to it. Um, somebody was doing this with the Tweety Remix Light and it broke off. And I would not recommend using any kind of a tweed or a single ply yarn to sew seams like this with. 
because they will start to fray as you continue to go back and forth, as you pull on the working yarn, it will eventually fray and come apart in your hand. So I do recommend that you use applied yarn. If that's different from the yarn that you knitted your sweater with, that's okay. Um, it could even be a cotton. It doesn't have to be the same fiber, um, but it does need to be a stronger yarn. Okay, so now we're coming to this area where there's another sort of step. So again, we're gonna go down to that part of the step. We're not gonna go in here. We're gonna go a little bit further down. So we're angling down with our step to the next lower stitch. And then going in where we came out of and under two legs up above in where we came out of and under two legs down below. I'm gonna do that same thing. So now I'm angling away because of the steps and then resuming my path alongside as close to the top of the work as I can go. So I don't pull it every single time. I don't pull tight every single time. I usually tend to work about an inch of the seam before I pull. And I don't want to split. So one of the things that allows me to, to be able to move that yarn back and forth is that I'm not splitting as I go in. So I try and find a nice clear path in between the stitches and coming out of the stitches that I'm not doing any splitting of the yarn because um, that will make it more difficult. So there's another step. So I angle down. I made a mistake here and I only went under one leg, looks like. So I want to go back. So then I'm angling from here down. So again, pulling that, you can see how nice the seam comes together. So you do that all the way across both shoulder seams. If you pull it and then you can't see where the yarns are coming from to put your needle, like to return your needle into the place where it came from, just gently pull it apart and you can see the yarn that you're working with is moving. It's the moving yarn. So if I just tug on it a little bit, I can see it's coming from this spot. So that's how you can go back to working on it. I don't want to catch that. Now this is not um, a rule that you have to follow. Like if you come across something that makes you want to move your needle to a different place, you're allowed to do that. Um, but you want to try and keep your stitches an inch, not an inch, a stitch width or stitch height away from the edge and a stitch width as you make them. So if you ever have places where you can't easily see what you're doing, then just continue to stitch together in the same kind of rhythm as you go across. If you make a mistake, if it doesn't turn out exactly the way that you like, you can gently pull it apart like I showed you and continue and just try again. Seaming can take some time. Um, it's the end of the day and I'm doing this with tired eyes and I feel it. I feel tired eyes. 
So if I make a mistake, um, I will say that I prefer to seam in daylight. I prefer to seam in the morning because I have made big mistakes in the middle of the night <laughs> when I wanted to be done with something and, and I rushed. But there's, there's a shoulder seam, pretty smooth right there. And you can see that although it's laying flatter where I've done the seam, these sides are lining up pretty nicely on both sides. So I think that came out pretty well. Any questions? It Does it help or hinder if you pin the two ends together or should they be left free? Um, I think I find it the most helpful if you block your pieces first. This piece was okay. not blocked already, um, okay. but I do find that that is really helpful. Um, I finally got everything to line up, but like I said, I'm going to let it sit for a little while. <laughs> so. um, some people... So, and I'll talk about this when I do the sleeve seaming. Um, I don't usually need to do it for a straight line like this. And for, you know, this is only like four or five inches of seaming. Mm -hmm. But if you have pins or even if you, um, if you don't have pins, you could use waste yarn and mm -hmm. just tie a bow, like take the darning needle and go through the ends and tie a bow and then tie a bow here. And then you could do it in the middle. And then if it were a long seam and you wanted some guidance as you were going, mm -hmm could do more than that. So like the ends, the middle, and then you could break those apart into equal parts and have one, two, three, four um, sections to do. And we will do that for the shoulder seam or for, sorry, for setting in the sleeves. This is the right, shoulder Right, right, yeah. Um, because I find that's really, really helpful. The other thing I wanna just point out is that we're doing the tops of the stitches to the tops of the stitches. So they're the same size. Mm -hmm. But when we go to do the tops of the stitches to the sides of the rows, it's going to be different sizes and that's mm -hmm. going to make a difference. So when we're setting in the shoulder seam, particularly, you've got rows on the outside of the mm -hmm. body. So the front and the back, you're, you're going to be joining to rows and the top of the sleeve is going to be the tops of stitches. And so they're right. not the same size and we're going to have to take that into consideration when we do that seaming. Yeah, I've got two sleeves already, but everything's going to sit for a little bit. So, so if it's going to sit, why doesn't it sit blocked? Yeah, well, I, I will. I'll, okay. I'll block it. I will. I've got time. I've okay. got time. So that's the seaming part of it. And then picking up, um, I, I haven't ripped this back, but I can... I can, um, but I can show you where I got to so far. So this is what we did in class this morning. And these stitches here were on a holder mm -hmm. at the top of the neck. And so I just slipped my needle into them and I worked them in pattern, maintaining the marker as I went mm -hmm. until I got to here. And then I took my needle and I picked up stitches and the pattern tells you how many you're supposed to have from here to here. <laughs> and when I got to the top of here, I found that I needed some more stitches. And so I slipped backwards. So I slipped the, the stitches back to where I thought there was space to pick up another stitch because the yarn that you're using is underneath there. So I just went in and grabbed it. Um, I just pulled it through to the other side and added the stitches in the places where I wanted them. Um, mm -hmm. And I can demonstrate that when we get to the other side of this. I'm gonna leave these stitches where they are for the moment and then continue with this. Then as you're going across the back, there's another number that they give you of how many stitches to have. And you'll notice on the back, that you have the sides of rows that are sort of slanted there. And then you have the tops of stitches 
evenly across. Well, these you should absolutely pick up one for one. So if there's, I don't know how many there are that are straight across, but let's, let's say there's 20 stitches that got found off there. You want to pick up one stitch for every one stitch in this section, because that will just look so much better. And you can see how those stitches all line up. But in this section, I was sort of generous with how many stitches I picked up. So that right here is the end of the one for ones that I picked up. And I had about one, two, three, four, five, six stitches that came along this edge. And what we realized is that when I get to this other end, and I have six stitches there, that we're gonna have about five or six more stitches than what the pattern calls for. And so we discussed, what does that mean? So I could have picked up fewer stitches along here, but as you can see, they look like they're about a stitch width apart. Mm -hmm. They look pretty evenly spaced. So if I had spaced them further apart, I think it would look um, less regular in the bottom of my collar here. And I think it wouldn't look as good. So this is very similar to a technique we do in socks when we're picking up around the heel. I picked up more stitches than the pattern wants me to have, but in my first row, I'm going to decrease these six stitches. And what I'll do is work them together so if these, if there's extra stitches up here, I'm gonna knit two together um, three times to get rid of the extra stitches, but I'm not gonna do it one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm gonna do it evenly across the top of my collar so that the extra stitches that I've, cause it'll be six total extra stitches and I wanna get rid of them evenly throughout the collar, not just bunched up here and here. Would you, would there be another option to leave them as long as you had like an even, is it an even number of stitches that you need? You want to have an even number of stitches for the collar. Um, you could leave them and we talked about that, but six stitches is about an extra inch. Okay. So, so it would look too bunched then. So I, I, I mean, you're on smaller needles, so mm -hmm. it would be a little bit smaller. You could leave them. I mean, mm -hmm. I, think, I think arguably if you only pick up two extra stitches in, in creating a nice line, then leaving them is an option. If you pick up four extra mm -hmm. stitches, leaving it is an option. If you pick up six or more, you're starting to be like extra inches of fabric. So okay. that's, that is a question mark in my brain. And maybe because I'm willing to pull things out, maybe mm -hmm. I would try it. Mm -hmm. with the extra stitches and see how it lays. But if it stands up too high or if it seems a little bunchy or a little something mm -hmm. in the back of the neck, if the collar isn't laying the way I'd like it to at the back of the neck, I might pull it back to the first row and get rid of those extra stitches. Having okay. tried it. And you could put it mm -hmm. on a barber cord. You could slide a barber cord or slide some kind of... Um, lifeline I can, a lifeline all i can think of is the word lifesaver <laughs> to put a mm -hmm. lifeline in yeah now like you could put a life cherry lifesaver cherry lifesaver cherry, life cherry, you could put a cherry <laughs> lifesaver in this and then it would have that and it would be there for later um mm -hmm. so i'm going to go ahead and continue to here and we're going to pick it up exactly as we picked it up there and i'll show you what that looked like so my picking up a stitch, when it's uh, evenly across, you can see that this stitch is coming out of the center of my V at the top. And so I'm going, I'm only using the right needle, not the left needle. There's not, nothing over here except the sweater itself. So I'm gonna take the point of the right needle and put it where I want the stitch to come out of from front all the way to the back. 
I'm going to, I wrap around, but if you are a continental knitter, then you can do this. And then you want to bring it through and that's picking up a stitch. So you can pick it up the same way that you knit where you grab it and pull it through, or you can pick it up if you're an English style knitter by going through this way and wrapping it and pulling it through. I like to wrap it. That's me. That's my style. But um, but you may be different. So I continued along on this side, picking up one stitch, even though the rows were kind of, the stitches were getting further apart. I went as far as I could picking up one stitch for every stitch below in the collar. But then we get to this. And there's a little bit of a gap there. So I'm at the top of that section. And if I put my needle in here and make a stitch here, it makes that hole bigger. So I don't really want to go in there. And I don't really want to go in here because that's further away. So I tend to go into the knotty part of this because it's firmer there. I'm just going to mute because there's some sounds. Okay. So it's a little bit firmer there. And then I can go in here. So again, this is still kind of open. I'm going to go into the stitch that's near that edge two and into the top of that one three into here four. Five, and there's six. So if I count these, I should have six more than I'm supposed to. And I also have been using markers. Oh, I don't like that. Hmm. All right, so that doesn't look great right there. I'm gonna back up one, two, three. And work a little bit closer to the edge. I didn't like how that came out. These curved lines are a little bit tricky. So that just feels a little bit more stable to be closer to that edge, the very edge of my knitting. And if I want to match the other side, I would pick up one more. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick that one more up right in the middle of the seam. It's okay if it's not perfectly the same as the other side. I didn't pick one up in the middle of the seam on that side, but I think it's okay if I pick one up there. So now I can mark this as the end of the, um, the end of the back. And I'll be able to go back and count and double check against my other my other um, side. So I'm going to put a removable marker in there. All right, now we're picking up down the front again, and then we're going to put these on the holder and knit off of them. And so this is the same thing that I did just in the other direction. So holding this marker away, you can sort of see the line that I want to follow. 
when you're picking up stitches vertically, sorry, perpendicularly to rows, I try to pick up two stitches to every three rows. So identifying the rows, you wanna see the Vs. So I'm looking at um, this V. Those are each rows of stitches. So I want to go in this V and this V and skip this one, this V and this V and skip this one. And that looks like this. So this marker is a little bit bulky in there. Make sure you work with your working yarn and you go in there and wrap around and pull through and go into the next one and wrap around and pull through. And then I'm gonna, if I pull this apart, you can see that there is one strand between my stitches because I've gone in one, into the stitch, the row above this one. And now I want to skip and go past this one to the next one. And when I do that and I pull the stitch away, you can see that there's one, one, and then two. So it's thicker. There's two strands there. It's a little hard to see because of the focus. And that's, that's generally a good place to start in your um, picking up stitches to rows. So this is the beginning of the next set. So it's got one and I go into the next one and then I skip. So I don't wanna go here, I wanna go here. So now I've picked up one, two, three, one, two. Sorry. One, two, three. Am I losing my, my sense of counting? One, two. So one, two, one, two, one, go into the next one. Sorry, I lost count. And then you're gonna skip. Not this one, but this one. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And that should give you about the right spacing for the width of the stitches against the height of the rows. And we might do that one more time. So we just did one, two, so one, two. I'm put that marker back in where I was. Because again, we need to keep track of the number of stitches that we have and possibly add some if we don't pick up enough. Although I'm gonna try and pick up more closely than I did last time. So again, staying close to the, the edge and going where there's not already a hole and you don't wanna split yarn as you come through. So try and make sure that you're going through a place where you get good, a good um, release of the yarn that you're not, you're not, doesn't feel like you're breaking the yarn to pull it through the opening. Okay, so here. So this is a place where this, the rows are a little bit irregular. It's not just the straight side of stitches. It's where we were doing some shaping. And so I wanna be really careful 
to go about to go a, a stitch width across and go somewhere pretty secure. So I don't really wanna go into this big opening. I don't really, I'm already in this opening. So I wanna go in between. I'm gonna skip across that to pick up a stitch on the other side. So there's a little bit of eyeballing when you're picking up around the neck. Some places are very straightforward, like up here where you're picking up one stitch for everything. But when you're going against a curve, you're really, um, focus. you're really trying to um, do your very best to pick up stitches in a way that seems uh, like it matches the edging of your work. And when you can't, when they're, when they were being decreased, um, you know, almost one for one or where, you know, there's like a, a bind off of two or three stitches, you can go into each stitch kind of like we did with our seaming and go down below. So that's also an option. So now I'm going more or less one for one. There's a gap between, this is an interchangeable needle and there's a gap. So things are not sliding easily. Try it. Get the yarn out of it and One, please. Turn a little, a little light surgery on the knitting needles. There we go. Okay. Sorry, that wasn't sliding, so it wasn't coming along. All right, so I'm going back to the last part. And again, I'm picking up one stitch for every stitch along this edge. And then I'm going to pick these up. So to pick up those that are already being held, I take the other end of my needle. So I'm turning everything around. I'm holding these stitches up. I'm going to pull them up a little bit so that they're nicely formed along the waist yarn. And I'm going to slip the waist yarn that, sorry, my needle, my other end of my needle in purl wise into all those stitches through the marker, through, 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 through all, there should be 13 stitches. And then I can cut this and pull it out. And then turn back around. And I should be able to just knit right across into those stitches. Slip the marker. And then we are doing the 
Actually, we are not doing that. We are purling. So resuming the pattern for the other side. And now all of the next stitches are picked up. So at this point, you'd wanna go back. If you've done a careful job and you've picked up pretty evenly across, you wanna go back and count to make sure that you have the correct number of stitches. And if you don't have the correct number of stitches, you can place a marker like this one or a safety pin where you think you could add a stitch or where you think you can take away a stitch. So if you're off and you have too many and you wanna take one away somewhere, you could maybe say, oh, these two are pretty close together. I could knit those two together. Or, you know, I know that I have extra ones along here. So I'm just going to do a regular number of decreases across this section to get back to the right number. Um, or I need more stitches, maybe pick up or make a stitch in between places where they seem to be spaced a little bit more further apart. So that is my recommendation for picking up around the neck. Um, it is a little bit of trial and error. It is trial and error even for people who are really good at it. And even if you pin it and mark it off, you still may find that it takes some practice to get to a place where you're really comfortable picking up stitches. But it is worth doing because when you can pick up the stitch as well, it looks so nice. It, it can be such a nice finishing touch to your sweater. And um, it's a small thing, but it makes a big difference in your, in your finished object. Look at that sleeping dog. Okay, so today was the, the neck and shoulders for the Church Mouse Quintessential Cardigan. Next month, we will be doing the sleeve set in. So your homework for the month is to get at least one sleeve done. And um, and then there's going to be seaming underneath the sleeves. I find that it takes a bit to, to set in the sleeves. So I want to really concentrate in May on doing the sleeves and getting them done right. Um, and then we will do the final finishing bits in June, which will be sewing the underarms and sewing the side seams and sewing on the buttons. So that might not be so long, but we might talk about our next project in June as well. Any questions today? Nope, I think I'm gonna block everything. I did my sleeves two at a time. So they're all even, the same oh size. God. I made sure I matched them up and they fit to the size. <laughs> They weren't but, three inches too short, like somebody's? Well, they're just going to fit. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> they're okay. just going to fit. Okay. But, um, and blocking can help you. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm block. I'm going to block everything. So, but the sleeves turned, the sleeves turned out real good. I like doing them two at a time like that to make sure they, one, they both get done yep. and they, get done the same way. They're the same size, everything. So but when you do them two at a time, you have two skeins of yarn and you're you're yep. really doing both sleeves on the same needle. Yep. Across and that's, long circular. I mean a lot of people like that. I personally I my life is too confusing. Um although I make enough mistakes between piece one and piece two that maybe I should start doing them at the same time. Well I you do have to pay attention. I use lots of markers, lots and lots of markers. Um, I did have to go back and tink. There were there were tinking sessions. There were to make sure. Yeah. So I, I will say that um, one thing that I have come to appreciate more and more and more and more is my circular counter. 
So I am using mm -hmm. this on my- Oh, one of those twice shared sheep counters? Yep. So what you can see is that it's a bead with the number that is that is stable to one loop, one ring. Mm -hmm. Right. And the next one along is stable to the next ring. Mm -hmm. And so the one that it's attached to, so the ring that you use is attached to the number for that row. Okay. And when you come to the next row, you just slip the needle instead of, so the needle's in here on the left-hand side. So you take the right needle and go through this one and let that drop off of the mm -hmm. left side. And that's how you go around and around. If you need to keep track of tens, they have this removable marker that you can go 10, oh, yeah. 20, 30. I so forget what they call that. They have a name for it. The dangly thingy? I don't know what it's yeah, called. Yeah, the, the, cute, the cute little dangly thingy actually has a name. Yeah, and then um, they also have a little, just a little guy. So this mm -hmm. has a hedgehog on it. I can I can actually say that the hedgehog is not helpful, but it does, <laughs> it does give some weight. I do tend to like throw it to the other side um, mm -hmm. It does not catch easily. It is a little bit more fiddly, but it's less fiddly for me than keeping a mark, uh, keeping a counter on or trying mm -hmm. to keep track by making a note. So I really do like this as mm -hmm. a tool because it allows me to, to keep good track of my rows. And as I'm doing these buttonholes on black yarn, you can see. That oh, I was like. I was vigilant with the damn rose yeah. on my knit companion with those buttonholes. So, vigilant. There's one. I mean. Yeah. So it does, it makes a big difference and it's been very, very helpful. So I am uh, yeah. very grateful that I've been using that and it's, it is working well. I mean, it was, I was, I was bound and determined <laughs> to make sure those were even. Um, and it was, that was, that was definitely, you know, um, I was on a mission, but I will say there was lots of tink. There was tinking with the, um, with the sleeves, not so much ripping back, but definitely there was, there was some tinking going on, but um, in the end, they were both finished at the same time and um, they look good. They look, they look nice. There's a, they're a nice length. So, and then I, I kind of, pinned them to the side of the um the sweater you know to the underarm and I'm like okay everything looks like it's fitting so I'm glad to hear that yeah 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 but, all my um, pieces are fitting now yeah I I you know what I get it I that was so easy to do it was so easy to do with this well I'm and I'm I mean, there's no excuse. I'm switching between projects, but I should have made a note of the needle size. I should mm -hmm. have checked my needles. I mean, these are just the things. If you are switching between projects, then make sure that you write down the size that you're doing. If you mm -hmm. make alterations and you need to match them from one side to another, make a note on your pattern of the alterations that you've made, whether that's a knit companion or written down on a paper pattern. Oh. If you are using a different needle than the pattern has printed, then that's fine. You can use a different mm -hmm. needle, but make a note. <laughs> I started, I, I did, I started to do that. And Nick Companion is like documenting every, because I, I always use a different needle than what the pattern calls for. Mm -hmm. And the gauge is, yeah. so I'm like, okay, what, you know, especially with socks, I'm like, okay, what yarn am I using? What gauge am I using? What needles am I using? Because I'm like, I'm tired of like always it's tons one and tons of swatching. It's one thing if you're knitting a blanket or something like this poncho that's all one piece that you're just going to keep going, like then it doesn't matter your your needle th that's in it. But like I'm notorious for stealing needles from projects. Mm -hmm. You need to write that stuff down. <laughs> I started scribbling. I started the rocket tee mm -hmm. and I put it down and I just you know, a knit companion, because you can scribble all over everything. I set it down for a while. I just like wrote huge notes all over my, uh, my iPhone on the page, what I was doing, like all over the, because I know I can erase it. So I just, it was like in my face, like, okay, these are the things I need to know when I come back to it. And it has to be in my face mm -hmm. when I pick it up. 
Otherwise, I'm going to screw the t-shirt up. <laughs> like, I don't want to screw that one up. Screw the t-shirt up. Especially because you're yeah. doing mohair, aren't you? Pardon me? Are you doing mohair? Yeah. yeah. Don't screw mm -hmm. that. No, right. no. Fussy. <laughs> it's too fussy. I've had to, to rip back. So it's past seven. I hope you have. Yeah, go ahead. I'm tired. Oh, have a wonderful. You're tired. Month. I will see you soon and we'll Alrighty. be back next month with setting in the sleeves. Do Perfect. Them, we'll talk to you later. Do it at a time if you think you, you got the focus. Yep. Alrighty. Thanks. Bye-bye.